Rare Earth originated in a band called the Sunliners, who were formed in the Detroit area in 1960. The original lineup of the group included Pete Rivera, a.k.a. Peter Horlbeck, on drums and lead vocals, Rod Richards on guitar and vocals, John Persh on bass, trombone, and vocals, Gil Bridges on sax, flute, and vocals, and Kenny James on keyboards. The band spent years playing club dates in and around Detroit, not attracting much notice, but slowly honing their skills. In 1968, they decided that they needed to revamp their image and change their name to the hipper-sounding Rare Earth. They attracted more attention under their new banner, and Verve Records signed them to a record deal. Motown session guitarist Denny Coffey helped produce and arrange their debut album, 1968's Dreams Slash Answers. Although it didn't find an audience and Rare Earth were quickly dropped, but the album made it possible to explore more of the country on tour and their cover of the Temptations hit Get Ready, which was recorded on Dream Slash Answers, became an extended show closing jam that would sometimes stretch out to an hour and a half. Meanwhile, Motown Records, far and away Detroit's most successful label, enjoyed tremendous success with their soul and R&B classics. But the company had little luck breaking into rock and roll, which was dominated by White X. Motown founder Barry Gordy decided to create a subsidiary label devoted to rock bands and was looking for a band to launch the new venture. Rare Earth Sound which straddled rock and R&B styles, appealed to him and he signed them when he asked the group to help brainstorm a name for the new label, which they jokingly suggested calling it Rare Earth, and Gory took them up on the suggestion. Rare Earth's second album, Get Ready, appeared in September 1969 with their extended version of Get Ready filling all of Side 2. Initial sales were slow, but when an edited version of Get Ready was serviced to radio, it rose to number four on the Billboard Hot 100 in early 1970, boosting sales of the album, which would eventually go platinum. Rare Earth's third album slipped out before they could record a proper follow-up. They had performed the musical score for a Generation Gap comedy drama called Generation, which would later be retitled A Time for Giving and Rare Earth issued the soundtrack at the tail end of 1969. When the film flopped at the box office, the LP was soon deleted from their catalog. By that time, the group had expanded to a six-piece with the addition of percussionist Eddie Guzman. Album number four, Ecology, arrived in stores in June 1970 and produced another hit single, a cover of I Know I'm Losing You, while Born to Wonder racked up significant airplay in the Midwest. The LP introduced further lineup changes, with Rod Richards and Kenny James leaving and Ray Manette joining on guitar, while Mark Olsen was recruited to play keyboards. 1971's One World produced another hit single with I Just Want to Celebrate, which cracked the top 10, peaking at number 7. The band rounded out 1971 with the release of Rare Earth in Concert, a live album that included most of their hits while also demonstrating their knack for extended soloing. The 1972 album Willie Remembers introduced a new bassist, Mike Urso, as well as a change in approach. Rare Earth's previous albums had been dominated by covers and all of their hits had been written by tunesmiths outside the band, but for Willie Remembers, they opted to record only original material for the first time. The group had also relocated to California after Motown moved its offices from Detroit to the West Coast. While One World had risen to 28 on the Billboard 200, Willie Remembers staggered to 90 before losing its momentum. 1973's Ma represented an about-face for the group and their patrons at Motown. The sessions were produced by Norman Whitfield, known for his work with The Temptations, and Whitfield wrote all five tracks, two in tandem with one-hit wonder Barrett Strong. The album fared better commercially, but produced no hits, and Peter Rivera, Michael Urso, and Mark Olson all walked away from Rare Earth. 
Rare Earth was the opening act at California Jam Festival in Ontario, California on April 6, 1974. The festival attracted over 250,000 people and the band appeared alongside 70s rock groups Black Sabbath, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Deep Purple, Earth, Wind and Fire, Seals and Crofts, Black Oak, Arkansas and Eagles. Portions of the show were broadcast on ABC television in the U.S., exposing the band to a wider audience. When Mike left with Pete, they formed a new band, Hub, with Rare Earth's 1970-1972 co-producer Tom Baird using the initials of their surnames, Horlbeck, Urso, and Baird. Hub went on to record two albums for Capitol Records, a self-titled debut, and Cheetah but came to a sudden end in November 1975 after Baird was killed in a boating accident. With Jerry LaCroix on lead vocals, Reggie McBride on bass, Gabriel Katona on keyboards, Paul Warren on rhythm guitar, and Barry Frost on drums joining Gil Bridges, Ray Monet, and Eddie Guzman, Rare Earth soldiered on to record 1975's Back to Earth, which was moderately successful on the charts. Norman Whitfield returned as producer and primary songwriter for 1976's Midnight Lady, by which time Paul Warren had dropped out of the group. The album failed the chart and was their last for the Rare Earth label. However, Barney Ailes, a former Motown executive who had worked with the group, returned to the company to head their prodigal imprint, and he took on the band. Ailes was keen on reuniting the lineup that recorded Willie Remembers and Ma, but Ray Manette and Mark Olson opted not to participate, and Rivera, Bridges, Urso, and Guzman were joined by session players Dan Ferguson on guitar and Ron Franson on keyboards to record 1977's Rare Earth. Manette and Olsen returned to the fold for 1978's Grand Slam, which added disco and funk flavors to their formula. The sessions generated enough material that a second album appeared later the same year, Band Together. That album had the Bee Gees pinned hit Warm Ride, which peaked at number 39 on the Billboard Hot 100. After the poor commercial reception accorded Grand Slam and Band Together, Prodigal cut ties with Rare Earth, and for the first time since 1969, the band was not affiliated with the Motown organization. It would be four years before Rare Earth would release another album in 1982's Tide and Hot, which featured the same lineup as Grand Slam and Band Together, was issued only in Canada. From this point forward, a variety of musicians floated in and out of Rare Earth, who continued to perform regularly even if they rarely recorded new material. From 1981 to 2004, Gil Bridges and Ray Manette were the sole constants in their membership. In 1993, the group issued Different World through Cook International and a self-release, self-titled disc came out in 2005. In 2004, Ray Manette would drop out of the band and didn't appear on their 2008 album, A Brand New World. However, he would rejoin in 2009 and continue to tour with them until 2017. The final original member of Rare Earth left the lineup with the death of Gil Bridges in Detroit on December 8, 2021. He succumbed to complications of COVID-19 at the age of 80. In 2022, Metallica released a live recording from the Music Cares Map Fund Benefit Concert at Club Nokia in Los Angeles on May 12, 2014. The performance includes a cover of I Just Want to Celebrate by Rare Earth. In 2023, several artists performed Rare Earth's I Just Want to Celebrate to kick off the 2023 Grammy Awards. Jerry LaCroix passed away in 2014. And 23 years before that, Keyboard player Mark Olson passed away. And that's what happened to Rare Earth. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Give me some facts about Rare Earth that I failed to mention. Give me your favorite song out of their discography. And who should I do next on this channel? I love to hear any of your recommendations.
Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.